Welcome to my series of All About, where I attempt to deliver as much useful information about a subject related in some way to the hobbies of animal care or terrarium building in under 5 minutes. This one is all about springtails. Those tiny little white flecks that appear out of nowhere in your terrarium, houseplants, gardens are not a bad thing like so many have asked. They're springtails, or common boa if you want to sound like a smart ass. It is said that there are 100,000 springtails in every square metre of earth in regions where they exist. They are thought to be one of the most abundant microscopic animals on the planet. I can't of course confirm this number as I didn't have time to count them all before tea. But I do know I would be happy if they all subscribed to my channel, as I would if you did, and also tickle my bell, so you get notified of my next amazing instalment in this series, all about snails. One wet Wednesday afternoon, scientists got together because they was bored, and decided to reclassify springtails from insects to hexapods. Many disagree with the decision, but who am I to argue? Hexapods it is then. These springy little exapods are well sought after in the reptile and entomology hobbies, and terrarium builders are slowly catching up with the trend. Placing springtails in your mini ecosystem helps prevent mould, because they eat it. Springtails don't only consume mould, so don't worry if you don't have any, that's a good sign that they're doing their job. But they also eat decaying matter, desiccated leaves, dead insects, algae and fungi. You can catch your own springtails in your garden with a tiny net and a whip, or you can just collect them from under fallen bark and leaves and brush them into a container for later use. Either this, or you can buy a culture from eBay or your local reptile emporium and start a culture of your own. There are numerous species of springtails out in the wild, but the most popular that are used for bioactive setups appear to be the temperate whites, or columbola if you're posh. Tropical orange springtails are also used in some setups, but they are expensive and provide no extra service. Buying orange ones is like putting a Go Faster stripe on a Prius. Springtails are easy to keep as a standalone colony. A simple airtight plastic box will do. It needs to be airtight or other creatures will enter, such as gnats and mites, and could cause your culture to crash and burn. Covering the bottom of the inside box with charcoal lumps will give them something to breed and live on. Just make sure that it is lump wood charcoal and not briquette, which is usually doused in diesel or petrol and will murder your tiny mould munching soldiers. You will also need to add water, the springtails like it damp and moist. Another super interesting fact about springtails is they are hydrophobic, meaning that they can walk on water, like Jesus, or a tiny boat. You can feed your springtails on several things, Mine like a mix of baker's yeast and crushed up fish flakes, but many people throw in a few grains of rice and they eat the mould that grows on it. I just check every few days to see if they've eaten everything, and then add some more if they have. Providing you don't use all your springtails when you make a terrarium, then you can keep a culture like this going indefinitely. Unlike this video, which is now over. Thanks for watching.